Welcome to the Planning for Life podcast with certified financial planner professional Russell Jacobs and financial life advisor Carl Coolidge. Carl and Russell will share creative strategies and ideas for overcoming challenges in your personal and financial life. Inevitably, life happens, and we will empower you to reach your destination. Thanks for joining us. Now, on to the show. Hello and welcome to another podcast. Today, we are going to be interviewing Russell Jacobs. Now, one of the really cool things about working with Jacobs Coolidge and Company is their experience with transferring wealth. And today, what we're going to talk about is how to prepare your family to be a responsible steward of not just financial resources, but but things that are even more important than that. And Russell has walked through many, many families through this process, including his own. So we're going to really lean on his expertise here and find out what you can do to make sure that your family are going to be responsible stewards because, and Russell, I don't know if you know this um, statistic right off the top of your head, but it's an abysmal number of how long wealth lasts between interracial wealth transfer. And it's a very small number. Is that correct? I uh, I think you meant to say intergenerational wealth. That's what I meant. Yes, sir. Yes, but I don't have the exact statistic. But there's a phrase that's global: shirt sleeves to shirt sleeves in three generations, which you can go to any continent and they'll have a similar uh, phrase. You know, because you start as the worker at some generation, and the first generation, the first generation makes it. The second one can grow it or consolidate it. The third one enjoys it. And the fourth generation, that is, laments the fact that it's gone. Wow. So you typically start with someone entrepreneurial in the first generation. And then second generations, your professionals, lawyers, CPAs, architects, etc. The third generation is when you get into your actors, artists, ski patrol, uh, things like that. And, and, and it's, it's global. So, uh, it's not something that's specific to the U S or any particular region of the country. And it's not really, uh, certainly the more you have, the more there is to enjoy and squander, but this is true at all levels of economic, uh, society. Well, as you can tell everybody, so this is definitely something that Russell has a lot of experience with. Where, where do we even begin with this conversation, man? Well, I think that the best place to begin is you have to educate and prepare your children for the money. You know, we spend so much time working to make the money. And then if you are successful at whatever level of success you have, you prepare the money for the children. But so often the parents don't talk to the children about the money and the children are uncomfortable asking the parents about the money. And so the paradox is you've spent all this time and effort uh, working to build the quote unquote nest egg. And then you don't teach your uh, children how to actually use this, this asset that you've developed, you know, and often the people don't know themselves. That's something that we've talked about on, on prior podcasts. But if you're trying to leave something for your children, they have to understand the value of that. So, educating them about money and being responsible stewards and then understanding as parents that it's not just financial capital. You want to think more holistically, human capital, social capital, spiritual capital. So what, what is of most value just depends on the makeup of the individual, but you have to kind of serve that entire complex of, of capital needs to really have true success with this. Well, you just said social, spiritual, and human. You know, how does one quantify each of those categories? I mean, if you're going to open that can of worms, Russell, what what is the best way for you to begin the conversation, especially when it comes to some of these more holistic aspects of this conversation? Well, it starts with knowing what you want as far as that's concerned. I mean, what is your why? why are you doing this? And certainly there are people that want to spend their last dollar with their last breath so they don't leave their kids anything. You know, there's other people we work with who are quite wealthy. They want to leave their kids something, but their fear is, is developing non-productive members of society. So they want to be very responsible. They don't want to have 
one of those inherited wealth children that feels entitled and doesn't you know do anything productive in society so the first thing is to know what you want really understand a that you're going to be okay by doing proper planning yourself or selves if it's a couple but once you've established that and you know you're on track and you're going to be there you have to bring your children into the conversation so they understand the value of that wealth and you know how much money someone wants is a function of what they spend and and how how much they will need in the way of capital to sustain that but you know some people are very happy and never develop much monetary wealth because they're uh, social creatures or or spiritual people who want to take care of others my parents i would say were spiritual and social and you know their gift was the music they provided for their church community uh, together for 35 years and they could have been paid they chose not to and you know they're two of the happiest people um, that i've known and so it's not all about the pursuit of the almighty dollar uh, but you know and that you are an example for your children so however you choose to behave with your money or with these other uh, parts of the capital equation the non-monetary parts you know they're watching they're learning and so uh your 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 living uh, style is the best teacher to your kids but then um, active communication where you purposefully uh, sit down and have a family meeting and communicate uh, your family philosophy and educate them about your resources and how you develop them and your hopes for them and those resources is important because if they don't know how are they supposed to fill that void they're going to do it through their peers or what they see on tv or on the internet this sounds to me like something that is much more available to the uber wealthy Right. And what I'm what I think I'm hearing you say is this this is a conversation that no matter where your wealth is or, or what your wealth is, that it's still something that you should have conversations on. Uh, do you get resistance uh, when you bring this up, when you notice that somebody has some means that that family governance and these sorts of questions need to be asked? Have you had people who push back and just say, dude, I don't want to talk about that? Well, you know, people inherently don't like to speak about potentially thorny issues or something that might create conflict so you have to establish ground rules that of you know decorum where you're going to behave properly but yes you do get some pushback on this because a people don't generally like to speak about dying thinking about not being here anymore and and the children are very uncomfortable often more than the parents sometimes because uh, they don't want to ask about these things so if you if your client happens to be a child of someone who has these resources uh, and particularly if they have siblings, they're pretty uncomfortable talking about it because they don't want their parents or their siblings to think they're money grubbers. Uh, so, so kind of the establishing the, the ground rules of why you want to have this conversation and with whom uh, is very important. So, yes, you do meet resistance just because, you know, it's with all financial planning, for whatever reason, we don't like to talk about the reality of, uh, life is a one-way journey you know you're born you grow up you work you retire and then you die and whether it's too short or you live up to be a hundred you are going to die and uh, you can either prepare your kids or not but uh, you know, there's a lot of great success stories out there of children who are prepared and become responsible stewards of wealth and they avoid the shirt sleeve to shirt sleeves in three generations but you know i would say as far as economic level that you at least are talking about people who have been responsible savers and live within their means you know which is one of the greatest lessons if you taught your children nothing else mm -hmm. uh, because the term delayed gratification has been chipped away at for years with all of the commercials on television and uh immediate gratification versus you know saving for the purpose of uh, buying something in the future lay away you know buy it when you have the money and credit's easy we want to keep up with our peers we're keeping up with the joneses and there's a lot of appearance out there that's not real you know it's a mirage and you know there's a great difference between cash flow 
and net worth. And so educating your children to the power uh, of that uh, is, is a life lesson that they will never regret having. How do you begin the conversation? Why, why don't we give our listeners the opportunity to start noodling this before they come in and have this conversation with you? What, what are some of the good questions that you have found? And you already brought that up, which is why, what is your why? But Russell, that's a really heavy question, man. I mean, I don't know if you, you know, Simon Sinek says start with why, but really that's a, that's a heck of a question, man. Is there something a little bit more gentle that you can walk into and maybe start there? Yeah, I would say you want your children to be able to function. And you've heard the term failure to launch. And, you know, we see, I mean, I had a client in here not terribly long ago who was talking about her child wanting to buy a house and she was going to have to help her. And I'm like, well, how old is she? She's like, she's 37. I'm like, well, you don't have to help her. You're choosing to help her. But, uh, you know, I think understanding that you want your children to be res- responsible and functional stewards of whatever assets they happen to earn or inherit. And, you know, I, I recall a conversation with our daughter, both of our children, when if you ask my daughter what she get for her 16th birthday, uh, she'll tell you she got a job. And she did towel service uh, at a local uh, beach club. We live near the ocean. And she got her first paycheck, and it was great. And then she bought gas and realized, wow, she had to work like uh, six hours to fill that gas tank. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, these are life lessons. And several of her friends were, you know, visiting uh, this facility while she was working there. And, you know, she's developed into this really hard working young woman. And she values the money that she earns now, works very hard. And it's, it all starts, I think, to me, you know, saying, hey, your parents work hard. And, you know, we're economical as far as paying attention to what we spend and then educated them that you will never go wrong with a solid work ethic and understanding that, yes, you work hard for that money and that money, especially when you're starting out, doesn't go near as far as you'd like it to. Mm -hmm. So you have to be a good shepherd with those assets. Now, what happens, I'm going to switch gears just a smidge here. What, what happens when the social or spiritual things that the earning generation uh, holds dear isn't in line with that, that second or third inheriting generation? What, what can the earning generation do and what can the inheriting generation do in order to make adjustments if needed? Well, I think if, if I understand your question, I mean, I was, I was reading something recently and it says, it said, you can do anything, but not everything. I think it becomes a prioritization exercise where you really look deep into yourself. And if you're married or if it's a family discussion, have that conversation, what's important to you. And then understand the dynamics of what in the way of resources does it cost or will it take to achieve that, you know, whether it's more of a social work. There's a young couple uh, who are clients of our firm, and they're just a dynamic young couple. Uh, And he runs a local, or it's really regional now, non-denominational youth uh, fellowship program. And uh, she's developed an application for adoption. And, and, And watching them grow both professionally and as a family, they've got three children themselves. It's just been very interesting to watch. And so, you know, they're not driven by, by money, but they're having great success uh, and they're living comfortably. So, you know, that, that is just one example, but I think it's all about understanding what you want. And then are you willing to, to pay the price for what, you know, that it takes to get it? Because that's really, when we talk about planning, it's what do you want? When do you want it? identify what it takes to get it and then determine if you want to pay that price or not. And that's true, whether it's social, spiritual or financial capital. Does that answer your question? Uh, Mostly. uh, Maybe I'm, well, first off, that was a great answer, right? So, so even, even that was good information to, to put out there. I think, I think maybe my, my question is a little bit more along the lines of, 
protecting the the core values of the of the family is that done through beneficiary designation is that done through the wills and trusts and I, I know you're not an estate planning attorney and I'm not trying to put you on the spot there but I know that you have experience with this what how how can we use some of the infrastructure that either we have in place from a financial planning standpoint from protection product standpoint or from a legal standpoint to make sure that you know, we can try to have one, have this money last as long as possible and have that earning generation, have that money do what their goal was in the first place. I see. Well, I think that does come back to down to a fairly uh, normal economic level. And preparing the money for the family is an important uh, aspect of success in this. And that means having proper wills and trust where appropriate and uh, just all the ancillary powers of attorneys and things like that and understanding that uh, if you don't write appropriate documents, whether it's wills, revocable trusts, or things of this nature, the state you reside in is going to write this for you under what are called the laws of intestacy. And if you have minor children, a guardian will be appointed for them, and you will end up with a spousal share of those assets. So there's a lot of things like this. So yes, understanding what you're trying to accomplish, then you have to get the proper legal documents. And and this happens frequently, especially with very successful people. But then what they don't do is communicate what they've done in an understandable and effective manner with their children. And that's where things get out of whack. So, you know, but wherever you are in the economic spectrum, you need to have proper wills. And then as you go up, you may need to add more trusts. And there's various kinds of trusts, trusts that can be set up in your will called, you know, testamentary trust and different things of that nature. But it's really about communicating amongst the family members once you've done these things, what your wishes were. One of the things we can do with our financial planning software is we can actually uh, create a video or recording of the planning level of the generation, uh, which we can update periodically and leave in their uh, planning vault so that their children can actually listen to and or watch uh, what their intent was. Because if you don't tell them, they're going to have to make assumptions. And this is often where conflict between siblings uh, begins. But if you communicate periodically so that it's not taboo to talk about money and we understand that we're all going to die. You shouldn't really fear death. You should enjoy the journey. You create much more uh, possibilities of success and also camaraderie and and uh, good feelings between siblings after you're not here. It's when they have to interpret from their own viewpoints what they were trying to think you meant mm. because you never told them. Uh, And again, this is not a rich thing. You know, this is anybody who has assets, either the state or they will write their own documents. Certainly, the more you have, the more complex, but it's a fairly rudimentary uh, phase. And uh, but and it's about communicating in an organized, thoughtful and ongoing manner. So you don't just do it once and then not do it anymore. And uh, one of the most interesting ways to do this is through charitable giving. Mm hmm. So with a relatively small amount of money, you can set up your own family's charitable fund. And through that fund, you can actually use it to educate your children about the value of philanthropy. And it doesn't take long if you're educating your children by taking them out into the community to see that they're typically living a blessed life. They've got family. They've got loving family. They've got assets and they see others with less and through giving back they learn to be responsible stewards as well as being appreciative of what they have so incorporating a charitable angle uh, that goes back to the social capital aspect uh, can be very impactful and it also if you do happen to do a donor advised fund gives them a reason to get back together for common purpose in your memory long after you're gone because you know a lot of times in this day and age families scatter and they don't maintain these common threads of connectivity and so they're not even in touch and this uh, if it's important to you gives you a way to create that possibility in the future that your family will remain in touch with each other yeah 
I love that you just said, and, and I think this is kind of where we'll uh, start wrapping up today's podcast, is talking about how important it is if you have assets, if you don't do this, if you don't have this conversation, uh, then, then the state's going to do it for you. I know that there are horror stories about probate all over the place. In fact, all you literally have to do is Google probate. You don't even have to Google any qualifiers, and it's unbelievable what comes up. So making sure that you have a good conversation with somebody who has this experience is super, super important so that you can protect yourself, protect your wishes, and also set your family up for success. So closing thoughts, uh, Mr. Jacobs, what uh, what would you like to leave everybody with today? I would think that just thinking, hey, you know, we're all going to die. I can't tell you how many times I've been in meetings and people say, if I die, I'm like, oh, you're going to die. We're all going to die. <laughs> uh, you know, it's just a thing we don't like to think about or talk about. So understand that life's a journey that we are going to die and enjoy it and communicate your thoughts and wishes with your children and have family dialogue and conversation about that so that they don't have to then wonder what you meant because you told them that. You know, tell them you love them, tell them you enjoyed this journey, and this is what you'd like them to do uh, as stewards of whatever assets you were fortunate enough to create throughout your lifetime. Now, ultimately, they'll be their assets, but if you have the conversation and you prepared them for the money, not just the money for them, then they have a much higher probability of being successful. Magnificent. Russell, thank you so much for your thought leadership today. Thank you, Matt. If you have not subscribed to the podcast, make sure you click that subscribe now button below. That way, every time they come out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. And remember, it's all about the journey. And if you haven't had a conversation about this journey, it's going to be very important for you to take the time to have that with your family. So for everybody at Jacobs Coolidge and Company, including Russell Jacobs, this is Matt Halloran, and we'll see you on the other side of the mic very soon. The content is developed from sources believed to be providing accurate information. The information in this material is not intended as tax or legal advice. Please consult legal or tax professionals for specific information regarding your individual situation. The opinions expressed and material provided are for general information and should not be considered a solicitation for the purchase or sale of any security. Russell C. Jacobs III, Carl B. Coolidge, James Jacobs, and William Schwartz are registered representatives of and offer securities, investment advisory, and financial planning services through MML Investor Services, LLC, member SIPC, Supervisory Office, Jacksonville, Florida. Jacobs Coolidge & Company, LLC, is not a subsidiary or affiliate of MML Investor Services, LLC, or its affiliated companies.